morning, please, to Second Chronicles. We're in the Old Testament this morning, and we're turning to the second book of Chronicles, chapter 20. Second Chronicles, please, chapter 20. And we're commencing to read from verse number 1. Second Chronicles, chapter 20, verse 1. It came to pass after this also that the children of Moab and the children of Ammon, and with them others beside the Ammonites, came against Jehoshaphat to battle. Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea, on this side Syria. And behold, they be in Hezazon Tamar, which is Engedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord, and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. And Jehoshaphat stood in the congregation of Judah and Jerusalem in the house of the Lord before the new court, and said, O Lord God of our fathers, art not thou God in heaven? And rulest not thou over all the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thine hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee? Art not thou our God, who didst drive out the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel, and gavest it to the seed of Abraham thy friend forever? And they dwelt therein, and have built thee a sanctuary therein for thy name, saying, If when evil cometh upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. We stand before this house and in thy presence, for thy name is in this house, and cry unto thee in our affliction. Then thou wilt hear and help. And behold, and now behold, the children of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, whom thou wouldest not let Israel invade, when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and destroyed them not, Behold, I say, how they reward us to come to cast us out of thy possession, which thou hast given us to inherit. O our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us, neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. And all Judah stood before the Lord with their little ones, their wives, and their children. And we know that the Lord will add His blessing to the reading of His own precious truth. I wonder, brother, I wonder, sister, in the Lord this morning, have you ever felt so far down that you think within yourself and you feel that you'll never be able to get up again? I wonder, is there a child of God this morning, a brother or a sister? You feel so far down that you feel and you think there seems to be no way up again. Mind you, it's a difficult place to be. It's a dark place to be. It's a depressing place to be. And just for the record, there's nobody in this tabernacle this morning exempt from finding themselves in that deep, dark place. The godliest and the greatest of men have found themselves so far down that there seemed to be no way up again. Do you remember God's magnificent servant Elijah? The man who was mighty for God. And yet in 1 Kings chapter 19, we find him so depressed, so despondent, that he finds himself in that place where he cries out to God, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life. You know, God's people this morning, 
can find, listen, we, I'm including myself here, we can all find ourselves down so low that there seems to be no way up again. The great preacher C. H. Spurgeon said that that was his worst feature. He went on to say despondency is not a virtue. He says it is a vice, and I am heartily ashamed of myself for falling down so low. But I am sure that there is no remedy, Spurgeon said, for it like a holy faith in God. And Christians, no matter how spiritual we are, we can all get down. And mind you, it takes just one wee trivial thing to put us down. And another wee word the Lord wants me to say this morning, if you know somebody this morning that's down, And you know somebody this morning is that's in that dark place. Listen this morning. Don't you criticize them. And don't you talk about them. Because child of God, you or I could be there ourselves. Friend, even the very psalmist this morning, the sweet psalmist of Israel could say in Psalm 38, verse 4, For mine iniquities are gone over my head as a heavy burden. They are too heavy for me. And I'm telling you, when you read through the book of Psalms, you're, the book of Psalms exposes the heart of the psalmist in difficult times. Even the prophet Jeremiah could say, Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. And I'll tell you something now, child of God. It only takes the devil, I the devil. It only takes the devil to use one wee trivial thing, just a wee trivial thing, to drive us so far down that there seems to be no way up. We can get so low that there seems to be no way up. You know, child of God, you're there this morning, if you're there, or perhaps maybe you'll be there this week. Oh, life's good today, but within 24 hours you could be down in that dark place. And anybody that's down there, anybody that may find themselves there, there's something God does not want you to do if you're down there. He doesn't want you to beat yourself up, neither does He want you to think that you're a failure. And don't let fear cause you to abandon your hope this morning. Listen, Tracy and I were out on Wednesday, and we happened to drop in to see uh, our sister in the Lord, Mary Copeland. Mary Copeland lost her husband last year. She has a disabled daughter, and she's suffering from cancer, and she's getting weaker and weaker. And last Lord's Day morning, Mary was sharing, I said, hey, Mary, would you mind me if I tell this? Go on ahead, she says, tell it. And she told us last Lord's Day morning, she was sitting in her living room with her Bible, and all of a sudden, she felt lonely. And all of a sudden she felt low. And all of a sudden she said within herself, I could almost, I could almost feel the devil sitting on me. And I said, Mary, what did you do? She says, I just said, right you gear you, up you get, you're not going to let the devil get the victory in this one. And she got up. 
and got round the four walls, got round the wall of her living room till she got round to the kitchen and got round to the back door and she opened the back door and she says, I took a couple of big <gasps> gulps of God's fresh air and I thank God that I was able to do it. A parishioner asked his minister one time, Sir, do you ever feel down? The minister said, Sure. Then he asked, the prisoner asked the minister, what do you do about it? She says, just get up again. My problem is not getting down, said the minister. My problem is staying down. Child of God, I wonder you there this morning. You're so far down, you believe you cannot see any way up again. Well, God has a lovely wee message for us. It's in 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and it's verse 9. Listen to what this text says this morning. If when evil come upon us, as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine. Do you know what you see there? You see, you see the peril that is powerful. You know, here in Second Chronicles chapter 20, the Edomite armies, they have marched against Israel, and they have marched against their king, and fear and terror has gripped the king and the nation. Verse number 2, we read these words, There cometh a great multitude against thee. And listen, child of God, this morning, never you be one bit surprised. Never you be one bit surprised this morning when a wave of peril will come and invade our lives unexpectedly. That's something the Lord wants you to know this morning. This is something the Lord has placed upon my heart to bring to your heart this morning. Never be surprised when a wave of peril invades your life unexpectedly. Do you know something, child of God? Now listen to me. You don't know what's going to invade your life this week. Nor I don't know. And none of us knows this morning what is going to invade our lives tomorrow that may turn your world, as you know it this morning, upside down. And listen, Satan this morning, Satan this morning looks for opportunities. Satan this morning looks for three trivial things. to drive us low and to drive us under. Maybe through a sickness this morning. Many people, the devil has driven low through sickness, seeming that there's no way up again. The devil oftentimes uses sorrow. Boys, how many people have been driven low through sorrow, thinking there's no way up again. Loss. Boys, the devil loves to use loss. I'll tell you one the devil loves to use. He loves to use loneliness. And I want you to notice, if you were to read the whole passage in the chapter before, you'll learn this. Israel done nothing to provoke these people to attack. And here this morning, the nation faces a no-win situation. They're outnumbered in, any, in, in every way, outnumbered. And yet this morning for the nation, there seems to be no way up. And you see when you're down so low, and there seems to be no way up. I can tell you the enemy knows how to tell you things. That seems so convincing. You remember Psalm 3? Psalm 3 this morning was written, I would say has got to be David's darkest hour. And the crowd that was against him said this, Many there be which say of my soul, There is no help for him in God. You know, this morning, child of God, you can be driven so far down. 
The devil can sound convincing. And there seems to be no way up again. You notice in that verse the peril that is powerful. And child of God, don't you ever be one bit surprised of a wave of peril that may come flooding into your life this week because none of us knows what this week holds. For you, nor for me. And I want you to notice something else in that verse this morning. It's very important, and I'll tell you it's vitally important. I want you to notice the presence that is precious. This is what they said, If when evil cometh upon us as the sword, judgment, or pestilence, or famine, we stand before this house. Now, underline this and in thy presence. If there is one great lesson for every Christian to learn this morning, it's to learn knowing the presence of God. It's not being only in the presence of God. God has promised never to leave us or forsake us, but here's the lesson we need to learn this morning. It's knowing the presence of God. It's sensing the presence of God. It's experiencing the, par the per presence of God. And child of God, I believe that we as believers need, need to learn this morning how to know the presence of God and how to abide in the presence of God. It says in verse 9 that we stand before this house and in thy presence. It's sad, child of God, and I say, if we're all honest this morning, and I'm including myself in this this morning, the problem with the whole lot of us this morning is this. We practice the presence of other things in our lives that hinders us from practicing the presence of God. wonder, have you ever got into that exercise this morning? Practicing and knowing and experiencing the presence of God. Knowing His presence. Feeling His presence. Being absorbed with His presence. So many of us this morning, we practice the presence of self. And that's a barrier this morning of knowing and experiencing the presence of God. We're so conscious of our own weakness. We're so conscious this morning of our own failures. We're so conscious this morning of our worries. We're so conscious this morning of our struggles. We're so conscious this morning of our stress that we fail to be conscious of the presence of God. Sometimes we practice too much the presence of self rather than being in the presence of God. Sometimes we practice too much on the presence of Satan. Things go wrong in our lives, we focus on him. And that's what the very devil wants you to do. Lovely picture this morning in Genesis chapter 28. 
Do you remember it was there where Jacob, he lighted on a certain place called Luz. The place was called Luz. And do you remember he took stones for a pillow? And that night he laid down to sleep. That was the night he dreamed a dream, that dream of a ladder reaching from heaven down to earth, and he saw the angels ascending and descending. And you remember how he woke up the next morning, and this is what he said. He said, Surely the Lord is in this place. Jacob knew what it was to be in the presence of the Lord. I say, sister, this morning, do you know what it is to be in the presence of the Lord? I say, brother, this morning, and do you know what it is to be in the presence of the Lord? Genesis 28, verse 16, you see the you see there the awareness of the presence of God. Go you into verse number 17 of Genesis 28, and you'll see the awesomeness of the presence of God, the atmosphere of the presence of God. I say, child of God, we need to get into the atmosphere of the presence of God. What did Jacob say? How dreadful is this place? What he meant was, how awesome is this place? I say, child of God, do you know what it is to be in the atmosphere of God's presence this morning? Getting alone with God. You say to me, George, how do I get into the atmosphere of God? I'll tell you how you do it. Very simple. You follow the command of Psalm 46 and verse 10 where it says, Be still and know that I am God. In the original Hebrew, it reads like this, Let go. That's what be still means. It says, Let go and know that I am God. Be still means to let go and let your hands hang down. That's what it means. To let go of yourself, to let go of your worries, to let go of your cares, to let go of your struggles, and know that I am God. And there's nothing more precious this morning than knowing and feeling and experiencing the presence of God. The hymn writer says, I need thee every hour. Stay thou nearby. Temptations lose their power when thou art nigh. I need thee, oh, I need thee. And how we need this morning to know what it is to be in the presence of God. Thirdly, look at that text again. There's the pray prayer that was priorities, and cry unto thee in our afflictions. And perhaps maybe there's somebody here this morning, and some circumstance, some situation has left you down, has left you depressed, has left you despondent this morning, and this morning there seems to be no way up. God has a message for you this morning. Do what Israel's king did. Get into the presence of God. Cry out to Him. I'll tell you something now. There's no person, no child of God that's so far down that God won't hear His cry. I 
The psalmist in Psalm 3 said, I cried with my voice, and he heard me out of his holy hill. I say, child of God, oh, what peace we often forfeit. And oh, what needless pain we bear. It's all because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. And what's wrong with this child of God will let our minds wander everywhere else on, on everything else. Instead of getting into the presence of God and praying to God. Look at the last wee phrase that says, there's the prospect that is promising. Then thou wilt hear and help. You know how often we allow the enemy to rob us of our joy. How often we allow the enemy this morning to put us so low. I love what verse 30 says because we've got the end of the story. God in the, did intervene, and this is what we read. And so the realm of Jehoshaphat was quiet, for his God give him rest round about. Sometimes our problem is we think the battle's ours when it's not ours at all. It's the Lord's. And when we take the fight on ourselves, that's when the devil gets the victory. Part of my pastoral ministry, I enjoy, in fact, I enjoy it more than preaching is visitation. And one day I was round visiting Verdi and Elizabeth Campbell. And Marina shared with me that her mommy was singing this song this day. And I knew the song. It was a song that W.P. Nicholson used to end his campaigns with. And Elizabeth and I done a duet together. Do you know, you wouldn't know what I would get up to when I get into people's houses. And her and I sung, I'm not going to sing it, but these are the words. And her and I sung, and Bertie was there, and, and kept the whole thing right. And this is what the song says. Down in the dumps I'll never go, for that's where the devil keeps us low. I'll keep my armor bright, and I'll sing with all my might. Down in the dumps, I'll never go. And the two of us sung it in tune. Ah, friend, that's where the devil wants us this morning, to be down in the dumps, to be in the place where we think there's no way up. Oh, but child of God, here's the exhortation from this message. Learn to know this morning what it is to be in the presence of God. Learn not only this morning to be aware of His presence. Get into that place where you feel the atmosphere of His presence. Remember this. No matter how low the enemy may put us, There's always a way up again. None can get too low that the Lord cannot reach. And if you feel terrible this morning, depressed, despondent, look up. The Lord is there. And your time are in his hands. May God bless his word to our hearts this morning. We're going to sing that.